It's a pretty competitive market. It's also a very difficult market. It takes a serious amount of time before you can confidently stand up and say, yes, I'm a furniture maker. I make furniture for people who are looking for commission work to be made. And I've also got a part of my practice which is producing a small collection of products which are readily available for people in the marketplace. The aesthetics of the piece are soft, they're gentle, and I think that kind of reflects the, the simplicity of what I'm trying to achieve. I don't want to adorn it, I just want to keep it simple. I want to take out everything that's not needed and present the most elegant but simple piece for someone to enjoy. My products are born from commissions. The commissions for me will hold something special about them, whether it be a process or a detail within the commission. And I will take that element and turn that into a product. One of the products that has come from a commission was a, a bed that I designed for a couple in 2007. And that was a bed and a bedside table set. That was just one off commission, but it was received so well it was exhibited and there was a lot of interest in it and so I therefore took it to the next level and I turned it into a product. But every piece is unique. Every single piece that I make, whether it be a, a batch run or an individual piece, they all have their own personality. They all have their own little idiosyncrasies about them that make them unique. When people are buying the handmade market, they're looking for a personalised piece. They're looking for something that's got quality, it's got personality, and it is, it's unique. It's peculiar to that individual maker and that individual end user. The commissions I'm involved with, they vary a great deal. I have commissions for residential clients. I do commissions for commercial clients. The residential ones are Usually one-off pieces for people's homes. Um, sometimes I will do several pieces over a period of years for somebody. And the commercial ones, they range from things like doing a restaurant fit out to working on a cathedral with a bunch of architects, developers, and a building contractor. So this is from the cathedral and what we're looking at here is upside down from the drawings here. But we have a part of the base, which is for the, uh, the tower, which has within that, there are four pipes for the organ. And those pipes are concealed within a steel framework, which is made up of sections of the top, middle and the bottom. And all of that steel work is hidden behind these individually turned columns. In total, there are 14 individual columns that are individually fitted. From a very large scale commission like the Cathedral, what I get from that is an opportunity to be involved with a historical piece of Adelaide architecture in the large scale manufacturing of today. You just don't get that level of quality that these people are looking for. They want this thing to look good in 100 years, so that's why they've come to someone like myself. I commissioned Lakes to make these amazing tables because we'd used Lakes previously when I first opened the restaurant. The reason I ended up in the very first place prior to that of going to Lakes was because I like his style of, of making furniture. It's very clean, it's, uh, it's Nordic almost, or Danish. Uh, it has exceptionally clean lines and, and, a, and, a, and a certain thoughtfulness about the timber he uses. 
in making these pieces of furniture. So my brief to Lex was make me a table that is sensible in a restaurant space. The main thing that stood out in my mind from the brief that Jock delivered was it needed to be able to adapt. So the table had to adapt to the needs of the restaurant and the number of people that they would put through in any one service. I mean, this, this was 12 months of conversation. This was 12 months of backwards and forwards. This was 12 months of emails. This was 12 months of, of discussions. We just kept throwing as many ideas around as we could. And then all of a sudden, there was a solution. It was just right there in front of us. The solution I came up with was a main dining table, big enough to sit two and three people. And from that, I came up with a concept which was placing a ring over the existing dining table. And that therefore then increased the size of the table to it doubled in size. And then from that, we were able to put two of the larger tables together with an insert on either side. And that then allowed someone, uh, well, a quantity of at least 12 people to sit at a table. And then you can actually add more tables to that. And so you can just continually add and add and add. Looking at the form and the materials that were used for the Arana table, I was presented with the brief to use an Australian hardwood. Uh, also, it needed to represent the Australian bush. So I wanted to randomly burn the legs. So when I drive through the countryside and I go through an area that's been hit by a bushfire, you see trees that are blackened and, and, and then they, they taper out back into timber where the bark's peeled off. And, and I wanted to be able to represent that in the form of the legs. So we ended up with these beautifully randomly burnt legs, which is very, very, even sitting here now and seeing so many legs and, and it being random and only to a certain height and it tapers out into the beautiful natural color of the timber. It reminds me of driving through the country. A restaurant should be a tactile experience and to bring the furniture into that tactile experience, for me as an owner and as a chef, as a restaurant, is important. The handmade market, it, it has grown. There's probably been a movement back towards handmade by makers as well, because, uh, you know, a lot of people have had enough of the disposable or consumable lifestyle. If people are looking to commission some work to be made, a piece of furniture, then they need to do their homework. They need to look around and see what's available to them. So not every person makes furniture the same, not every person designs furniture the same. So you're looking for a particular kind of personality. I would spend a lot of time with my clients trying to work out what interests them, what they dislike, what sort of things they like to think about and talk about. I'll take all that information on board and almost regurgitate that back to them in what I believe is something that they are looking for. And I would say 99% of the time, I'm on the money. You can buy furniture from anywhere you like, but if you buy something that's been made by myself, it's unique, it's got personality, and it's actually been made with a lot of care and attention.